Good morning and welcome. My name is Gina Yeski. I'm the pastor of Simply Grace United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that you have come to join us this morning for this time of worship. Today we will pray together, we will sing, we will have a message to inspire us, and we will celebrate Holy Communion together. I hope that this morning brings you a time of peace and hope in your life. You can find out what's more happening at Simply Grace at simplygraceumc.com. Thanks. Good to see you. Good morning and welcome this morning. We're so glad that you've come to join us for this time of worship. God, as we gather together, open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your presence. Open our arms to embrace the community. Open our minds to the beauty of truth. Open our hearts to the joy of new life. And so I invite Sonia now to lead us in the community prayer. We gather around the table in places far and near, eating sourdough, rye, tortillas, crackers, wafers, and Wonder Bread, the body of Christ drinking the wine or the juice from handmade chalices and silver goblets from coffee cups and juice glasses, the blood of Christ. The bread and the cup unite us with all who follow Jesus. This meal reaches back through the centuries. This table reaches around the world. Come, let us gather around the world, across screens, across the room. Amen. Um, we're gonna go to our time of offering. Today we have the opportunity to uh, just to recognize all the goodness that God offers us and offer a little bit of that back to God. Um, it's uh, important for us to just look around at the blessings that we have and to be thankful for all that we have. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, and enable us to see as you see and respond as you respond. And let us offer our presence and our prayers and our service and our witness as our gifts to God. And so as Sonia is about to uh, read the offering prayer this morning, I invite you to just lift up your hands and think about what are you going to give to God today? What is the gift that you are going to share back, um, be it a, a, a financial gift or a gift of prayer or a gift of service, whatever it might be, I ask you to just lift that up. And Sonia, I invite you to pray our prayer. What will be done with the gifts we offer in these moments has not been revealed to us, holy God. But knowing you through Jesus and trusting in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, we do know that they will be used to bring hope, to bring healing, to bring justice to all these, those people and places who long for these blessings. We offer these gifts with gratitude to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Justice Justice 
and joy For young and for old A place at the table A voice to be heard A part in the song The hands of a child chapter 24 and verses 28 through 33. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if they were going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is near, nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning with us while we talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the 11 of those and said to them, gathered together, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told them all that had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. One of 
of my greatest joys in life is sitting around a table and eating and sharing stories and laughter, as well as times of like really good, deep conversation. Coming together at the table to be with family or friends or colleagues is life-giving for me. In church life, um, it's common for us to have dinners and potluck suppers. This is a time when we share a meal. Most importantly, it's a time of sharing of community and one another. Some of my very favorite memories of Simply Grace are time spent together around a table. We had picnics and soup suppers and corned beef fundraisers and countless brunches together. And at each of these meals, while the food has been delicious, it's so much more. And so much happens around these meals. The Gospels record over 20 times that Jesus sits at the table and has a meal. He has a reputation of being a very lively dinner guest. Over meals, he deepened friendships and he welcomed the stranger and the outcast and he told stories and he challenged their assumptions. The meal in today's story comes at the end of Luke's gospel. And it's a setup for a meal um, is the journey. There's two friends and what they're doing is they're traveling along a dark road alone and they're mourning the loss of their rabbi. And they come across this stranger and he doesn't seem to know anything that is happening, the current circumstances. And as they walk with a stranger, they engage in stories and he begins to share with them. As they near their home, they invite the stranger in for a meal. And today we will see how that simple gesture of hospitality is an invitation to break bread together and it changes everything. Will you pray with me, please? God, I ask you that you give me words to share that inspire your people and that you open their hearts and their minds to the message that you desire for them to hear on this day. Amen. So over the past few weeks, we've been looking at encounters over the table. Interestingly, our lessons, each person, first it was Abraham and Sarah, then it was the widow, and now today it's the travelers. They all invited a stranger to come and eat a meal with them. It was their expression of hospitality. And yet, in each time, the stranger offered them so much more than they offered by sharing that meal. You know, while we probably entertain ourselves often, can we recall the various stories around hospitality? And what is the hospitality that Jesus is explicitly talking about? The professor and theologian Henry Nowen says, when he defines biblical hospitality as the creation of a free space where a stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality is not to change people, but it is to offer them space where they can allow change to take place. It's not to bring men and women over to our side but instead it is to offer freedom and is not disrupted by dividing lines. In today's lesson, when Jesus breaks the bread with these weary traveling companions, their eyes are open and they recognize him. And they saw and they experienced Jesus in a new and meaningful way. 
Similarly, as Jesus revealed himself to the disciples through the breaking of the bread, so he will reveal himself today to us. When we take the elements of the Lord's Supper, that communion coming together over a meal opens our eyes to see God more clearly. Jesus sets the table and change takes place. You know, I don't know how you'll come to this table this morning. You might come as Sarah and you're frustrated. Maybe you come to this table like the widow who is desperate. Or maybe you're distressed like the travelers. But I believe that God does not abandon us, abandon us in any of these circumstances. We are not traveling down a dark road alone. But we know that Jesus is our companion, and that is for the reason that Christ, our Lord, invites us to the table. Today, we will join together imperfectly over screens, but no matter the distance, we are at the table together as friends. My prayer for today is that Christ will be revealed to us through this meal, that we may find new life, the new life that was given to Sarah, the sustenance for the journey that was given to the widow, and the assurance that Christ is resurrected that was given to the Emmaus travelers. So today, I believe that this meal offers us peace. Today, as we celebrate communion, may our eyes be open just as the disciples' eyes were open through the breaking of the bread. And as we dip our bread or drink our juice, may we be reminded that we do not come to this table alone, but that we come in unity with one another. But let us remember that the story does not end with them drinking leisurely through the evening. Instead, after communion, the followers leave the table to share the good news of the resurrected Lord. And with others, they are extending the table. Christ invites us to this communion table, but then sends us out to extend this table. So you might ask, how is it possible for us to extend this table in our context? Where are there opportunities today for us to invite, <coughs> excuse me, the stranger to the table? How do we extend the hospitality that has been transformational through all time when it's difficult to sit even at a table together to have a meal, both because of COVID, but I also would challenge, it is due to the deep divisions in our world. So I began wondering, have I gotten stuck on my own definition of hospitality? While Many of us might like to entertain. There is a difference between entertaining and hospitality. Entertaining is a bit like what we like and what we're willing to share. So when you entertain, you choose the food you like and you choose the music that you appreciate and you choose the atmosphere that you enjoy. And while our guests often appreciate these efforts, they are not our only consideration when we're making the choices. Whereas hospitality is all about the other. The hospitality that Jesus offers goes beyond offering a meal. It's about making a commitment of time and effort to get to know someone and to hear their story, 
It's about asking questions to sincerely show interest in who they are and where they've been. It means keeping our hearts and minds open to really see God in each person, even the stranger. And it is about freely giving of ourselves while granting others the freedom to give of themselves. Then I began to wonder, are there ways that we can enjoy, are the ways that we enjoy gathering together, maybe those potlucks and the dinners, are they more about ourselves than about the other? While these practices are important for ourselves, do they really extend the table? Where are we creating spaces? And I wanna you know, challenge us. Maybe it's beyond physical spaces where we can become friends with a stranger. Where are we listening deeply and offering grace-filled hospitality? I wish I had, you know, clear directions or answers to these questions, but I don't. But this might be something that each of us needs to wrestle about and consider for ourselves personally, as well as consider for ourselves as a church. The good news is that we're not alone. Particip participating in biblical hospitality means we are willing to open up ourselves and to engage in ways that are way beyond our human abilities, but instead are opening up our lives and our plans and our schedules to God so that they can be used to welcome others. For today, we will begin this celebration of World Communion Sunday. This is a beginning of inviting people that are different together to the table where Christians from around the world with different creeds and traditions come together around the table. For this day, we will set aside the things that divide us and extend the table to all. And Jesus invites us to this table. This table is for all of us, near and far, high and low, east and west, north and south. This table is for all of us, but it is not our table. It is God's table for us, and it is a table of grace. So come and take your place at the table this morning. You are welcome, you are invited, and you are called. Come, let us share this meal together. So I invite you to get together your bread and your cup, wherever it might be, kind of set it next to you as we begin to share this communion meal together. morning as we do communion, Chris is going to be singing a uh, part of our liturgy and uh, I invite you in your homes if you know the words to sing them. Um, we'll begin with the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift we them, lift up, them up, to up to the, the Lord. Lord. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right it to is give, right our give our thanks and praise. and praise. God of all nations, you created every person in your image and called us by your Holy Spirit to become one in Christ through baptism and through faith. 
In Jesus Christ, you showed us the way to live with unique gifts and particularities, yet in harmony with each other. You, O oh God, are indeed above all and through all oh. and in all. And so today we join with voices throughout the earth singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power. Holy are you, and blessed is Jesus Christ. Jesus lived among us to show us your love, care enough to feed hungry people, stopping to touch persons in need of healing, reaching out to those not like himself, the Samaritan woman at the well, the lepers from another country, those tortured with demons, a father pleading for his daughter, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, a rich young ruler, and the humble fisherman. When people gathered to hear his teachings, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to them to eat so that they might be fed. When Jesus ate with his disciples for this final meal, they remembered his blessing on the multitude. On that night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread and he lifted it and he gave thanks. And he said, take, eat. This is my body that has been given for you. Do this as often as you gather together in remembrance of me. And so when the supper was over, he took the cup and he lifted that and he said, take, drink. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant given for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you gather together in remembrance of me. And after his death and resurrection, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples told others through this meal that Jesus was the Messiah. God sent him to all mankind. And remembering now, we proclaim that mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. So now I'm going to invite you to take your hands and to Put them over your bread and your cup as we pray this blessing. God of mystery, send your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Prepare us to receive your presence to know your grace. May this bread nourish our bodies. May it nurture the fullness of our lives. May this cup quench our deep and yearning thirst. Here at this table, may we remember the table at the upper room, the tables of abundance that many of us enjoy, the empty tables of the poor and hungry, the banquet table in life to come. 
Let this meal reshape our every meal so that the justice and mercy known here will come our way of life. Until you appear again among us, we ask your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance in a world broken and grasping for wholeness. May the church yearn to proclaim the good news of the you are the savior. And so let us just take a moment and think of the things that are on our heart and just lift them up to God in prayer. And so let us join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. And Sonia, I'm gonna invite you to unmute yourself and join me in praying this. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, thy will be, be done, done on, on earth, earth as, as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us Give us this day, day our, our daily, daily bread, bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, the kingdom and, and the power and the glory, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. 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 invite you now to take your bread and lift it to the screen or your crackers, whatever it might be. This is the body of Christ broken for us. And this is the cup of grace and love given for us. And so the body of Christ broken for you the blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus prepared this table. Come and eat. Send forth by God blessing our true faith confessing the people of god from this dwelling take leave the service is ended oh now be extended and the fruits of our worship in all who believe the seed of the teaching receptive souls reaching shall blossom in action for god and for all god's grace did invite us and love shall unite us to work in god's kingdom and answer the call with praise and thanksgiving to God ever living the tasks of our everyday life we will face our faith ever sharing in love ever caring embracing God's children of each tribe and race with your grace you feed us with your light now lead us unite us as one in this life that we share then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to christ and that name which we bear
So let us now go to our closing. And you, I'm gonna invite you to unmute yourself so that we can pray this responsively. Ready. Unmute it. I have you. I have you. You have me. You have me. me. We have each other. We have each, each other. other. We'll reach out to others. We'll reach out to others. others. And God has us all. God has, has us, us all. all. Amen. All. Amen. Amen. Thank you.